blindly follow conclusions. We have to follow the process and the methodology that has been used to reach those conclusions. Let me give you an example. Let's say your college roommate is a complete slob and she doesn't do her laundry and she leaves half-eaten pizza out everywhere and there's mold growing and there are cockroaches coming into the room. And Let's say she says, well, I've dealt with my roommate and now my roommate cleans her side of the room and our dorm room is spotless. When we ask, what was the process that you used to get the roommate to clean up after herself? That might alter how we view that conclusion. And I'll explain why. Let's say we find out that the roommate's process to get to the end result is that she was videotaping the roommate's mess and broadcasting it on Facebook for everyone at the university to see. Well, then we might think, wow, the process you use to get the roommate to clean up is through shame and humiliation and manipulation and threats. Now, the person is thinking, if I don't clean up, my roommate's going to keep humiliating me. We might suddenly have an uncomfortable feeling when we look at the conclusion, the results of the process. Now, let's say that she sat down with her roommate and presented evidence and reason to persuade about the effects of black mold and cockroaches bringing in disease. So you can see that depending on the process used to reach the conclusion will absolutely alter whether or not we agree with the conclusion, the results, which is that now the roommate cleans up after herself. As always, stay strong and get toxic people out of your life.